title, bullets, description, A plus content, search terms, but where should you place your keywords for maximum indexing, the best chance of ranking that listing while still converting customers. That's what we're covering today and we're going to be using our own listing builder which you can download for free below this video and use with your listings. And before we jump in, if you haven't seen part one, I recommend you watch that. It is a good prerequisite to this which is part two. But now that you have your keywords, it's time to start the next part of the process where we're actually going to begin infusing those into the listing. If you enjoyed this drop it a quick like if you want to stay ahead of your competition remember to subscribe and if you want to support our work here watch an ad or two so the first thing we're going to do here is download our keywords to csv so next to each of these most important being high relevance but for each we're going to go right over here and we're going to say download folder csv once you click that, it should download to the bottom left of your screen. Once we open that, we can see all of our columns here. But the problem is we can see the search volume is just all over the place. So to order this, select the search volume column, click data at the top, and then sort. You can see A to Z, sort largest to smallest. That's what we want to do here. You're going to get this warning and you want to expand selection. What this really means is that when we change the numbers here, we're also going to change the corresponding columns. And of course, we want to see the search volume for the exact keyword. So it will expand it as we see here. So now it has moved all of those and the search volume is related to this keyword and descending from here. This marketplace column we don't actually need so we can remove that and competing products is not that important but we're gonna leave it here for now in case we have two like really similar potential keywords and one has lower competition. But do this for each of your keyword lists and save them. So we now have those five folders but on our computer right here. Then we're gonna start with high relevance. And this is where you're going to get into the weeds of choosing specific keywords. One of the things I recommend you get into the practice of is keyword hinging. In other words, including multiple keywords in one keyword phrase or key phrase. And so you can see here, anything highlighted in blue is actually all included in this keyword hinge, this keyword phrase here. So we're hinging all of these into one term here for the purpose of saving real estate. We don't actually have to have all of these separately again and again. We can just use this key phrase and it will include every single one of those in their full form. And we see the same here, but in orange. And now the next stage is we know these are the most relevant to our product, but now we can filter them and focus on the best through search volume which is how often customers use them. And so for example, here, I'm really interested in the ones which are searched with a higher search volume than 300. That's like 10 searches every single day. And so we are gonna highlight the most relevant, highest search volume ones in green. There are also gonna be cases where you find a keyword which is perhaps maybe not that relevant. And that's how you're kind of double checking all the work you've already done. And so if you do find one which, okay, that's not 100% related or could be a different product, highlight that yellow. Most important ones, green, less important, yellow, lower search volume, yellow. Now, most of these at the top, because they're super relevant, good search volume, they're going to be green. As an example, docking station phone. Now, that is is probably looking for our product but it is lower volume and it's not the best term describing our product man's charging station also quite related but it could actually be a like charging device rather than a docking station you're going to go with yellow there then as we get to the lower search volume these are less important but if they're super related like father's day docking station if that's exactly your product, you can still give that a green. Also, this one, Gifts for Men Docking Station. It's not often searched, but I really do want to try rank this product for the gift market. So that's why I'm going to give green to Father's Day and Gifts for Men. The other reason is these are probably going to be super low competition keywords. 
and these other ones which are lower volume and still relevant but very low volume we're going to give those yellow so now we have about 49 green here and 15 yellow now another question i often get is about plurals so i have men's organizer station and i have men organizer station men without the s in this example should i use both on my listing or will amazon like pick up the plural Amazon will not pick up the plural, so it's important, especially because we got high volume on both of these, it's important that we use both of these separately on the listing, one with men's, M-E-N-S, and one without the S. So in these cases, super high volume, super relevant, use both. Don't just go with one expecting the other to be indexed. So now we've selected the very best green, others in yellow, and we have our potential hinges. It's important to keep thinking this way because you want to save real estate and start thinking about these within your title. That's how the hinges actually relate, as we can actually start thinking about what we're going to put into the title. Next, look at your relevant folder. This is the next best, and you're going to do the exact same thing. Also, when hinging, you can see charging station, charging station, multiple devices, phone charging station. But then below here, we also have nightstand charging station. So we could use nightstand charging station for multiple devices or phone. Now, which one should we use? You should always use the one with higher search volume, of course. So that's how you can choose between ones that may make up a good hinge. Always go with the highest search volume here. Also, it's always a good sign if you do actually see your hinge as a high volume keyword, as we see here for the exact same hinge. So not only is it including our highest volume keywords, but it's also by itself a high volume key phrase. Also on these, just think about what the customer really wants. So we have multiple charging station, multi-device charging station. Now ours is more a stand while those devices are charging. It's more of an organizer docking station. What you also get is actual like little USB charging stations, which is what they may be looking for to actually plug in multiple devices at once. And so those, for that reason, my thinking is they're slightly less relevant. And so we're going to make those yellow. And then we have our yellow ones here. And then all of these would be green along with our hinges here. And then we get to medium relevance, just below relevant. Now this is where it starts to get a lot more open where customers may be buying our product or other products. And so here we are really going to focus on the gifting part because that's what we also want to sell our product as when people search for gifts for men for husbands for anniversaries we know this product converts well and so we're looking for our highest volume gift keywords all of those are going to be in green and then the lower volume and just less relevant keywords are going to be in yellow and then our low relevance as well as our misspells are not important just yet we're going to deal with these at the end now what you want to do is open a new document then you want to copy in all of the green highlighted keywords starting with high relevance so these are our high relevance ones then pull in the green ones from relevant and lastly we're going to bring in our medium relevance ones just below that now we have about 87 of our highest potential keywords in here but you can see the value of hinging here because just by having this term here we eliminate the use of five different keywords we can use just this one key phrase and so probably if we go through all of this in complete hinging we're probably down to about 60 to 70 keywords this is already a lot of keywords we're probably not going to get to the yellow ones for keyword inclusion because we do want to get all of these onto our listing but you are going to be using all of these keywords in PPC, which I cover in depth in PPC part one, which I'm going to link at the end of this once we're done building the listing. But for that reason, we are going to create a new document and include all our yellow keywords as we have done here. Once again, starting with the high relevance folder and you're going to copy and take these across to your new document here then we do the same but for relevant and lastly for medium relevance now we have all the yellow keywords and again we have about 80 keywords here so in total with ppc we're going to be looking at about 150 keywords that we can potentially use 
Again, with these though, we're probably not going to use them for listing indexing. But now you have two documents. The first, the green keywords, all your very best keywords. The second is all your other keywords, so all of your bases are covered. But you also know, okay, these are my highest relevance ones. Then just relevant, and you can even header this if you wish, if it helps. This way, if you know, okay, I need to add another keyword or test more keywords in PPC, you can come in here, see high, relevant, and then medium relevance. Also, if you need to choose a relevant keyword, for example, you can see them exactly in terms of search volume, focusing on those with the most customer searches. So how can we incorporate this and build our listing? First of all, only focus on the green keyword document now and we need to create a subset of keywords. I recommend you try and find less than 50 keywords. It's your most important keywords. For example, here, I am happy up to this level. The reason being these are very related to our product and the highest search volume in our high relevance area. I'm going to give them a slightly different green. Okay, so it's those ones in highly relevant then in the relevant area. Here I'm gonna choose less, but I'm focusing primarily on search volume because I don't mind having a slightly less relevant keyword, but it has huge volume. If we can rank for that and it still is relevant, that's good. Some of these like docking station will already be included and hinged in another keyword above as we can see over here in multiple places. But this is where this document comes in handy because when you run PPC, you can't just run for a hinge in all cases. You might have to run for that specific term. And so out of these, choose the highest volume ones, which are still relevant. I'm gonna choose these ones here, and we also have multiple hinges on these, which is gonna save us a lot of space. And lastly, we get to our medium relevance ones. In this case, gifting. How can we rank this listing for the gift terms? Again, I am primarily focused on volume because all of these, they're gonna be kind of medium related to the product, but we may convert. So I'm looking for the highest search volume ones. Now this one is actually quite difficult. They're all very high volume. I'm actually gonna select all of them and see how many we can include because we are gonna have a lot of space in places like the description where we can use variations of these. So we'll move through them in terms of volume as we go. But if we add those up, that gives us 53 keywords that we're gonna be focusing on here. One of the big keys here is you can see charging station, docking station. Now the reason those are also important is when selecting our keywords up here, we can focus on those that also include those terms because we know those are mega volume keywords. So here, for example, we see charging station included here, or even better at a higher volume, charging station. We see docking station. And so it also helps us choose our highest relevance keywords because we can also rank for our relevant keywords, but which are huge search volume. But then there will be some cases where you cannot find that keyword, like charging dock. Now charging dock, we don't have a hinge or long tail of that. So that is one of the ones that we're going to probably use in isolation by itself and in addition to whatever we use from here. So let's begin working on a potential title here. Now I really like this term and we're probably going to begin the title with this and you can open another document to make this easy. Now I'm not going to put this next because there's so much repetition and that's just not going to look good from a marketing perspective and readability and neither will this. But here's where our other list comes in handy. We can see charging station has huge volume. Also charging station for multiple devices. So I'm gonna copy this quickly and show you why. Because charging station, we actually hadn't really selected this as a big keyword yet, but it ends with charging station. And so what we can do is hinge once again. If we copy this in, now all we need is nightstand organizer. So now if we go nightstand organizer, charging station for multiple devices, now we have this keyword over here, but we also have charging station 
and we have charging station for multiple devices. And when looking at this more as a customer, this is very different. It actually starts to explain the device much more. Also now we have charging and docking station quite clearly here, quite close to the beginning of the title and to very high volume terms and ways of searching for this. The other reason I like this is nightstand as well as organizer are very common terms throughout. And so we do have them here quite prominently towards the beginning. With most titles, you're looking to keep it under 200 characters on Amazon. It does differ per category. Some are as low as 80, but in most categories, it's a max character count, 200. Now, Amazon or you can add the brand name to the front of the title. For that reason, we're going to aim for 180 characters. So if Amazon automatically adds your brand name, you're not going to be suppressed by going over 200 and you will know the character count of your brand name. If you are using Word for this, you can highlight your title, click review and word count. Then look at the characters with spaces, 95. So that's where we're at so far. Now there are a couple of terms we're missing, which I'm going to highlight here. The first is this one, charging dock just dock itself and the next is men's you can see with an s and we don't have that yet and we need that in the title the other one potentially is actually wooden en which is used less than i thought but it is used so we do want to have that somewhere and lastly but not as important as watch because it is also a docking station for a watch and here we see men's organizer station good volume very relevant and we don't have organizer station itself either. And so this will be trial and error, but let's add this. And then charging dock. So we're going to say men's organizer station charging dock. And before men's, I'm actually going to add wooden. Wooden men's organizer station charging dock. For cell phone and watch. The reason cell phone is that cell phone is also often used as you can see here. Now that's 166 characters. Lastly, I want to scroll down and definitely use our gift words. Here we see in order of importance, the occasions, birthday, then Valentine's, Father's Day, then anniversary, birthday gifts. We actually want to use this full term. And so we're not going to put birthday first. We start with the next one, which is Valentine's, and we're going to add that here. That's going to be followed up by Father's Day. Always spell exactly how your customers search. So here, fathers, no apostrophe or anything exactly like they search. Next, we're going to add anniversary. And lastly, we are going to add this exact term over here. And so that reads Valentine's, Father's Day, anniversary, birthday gifts for men. So now we're at 229 characters. So we're going to need to cut down. So first, because it's the lowest volume and I think least relevant, I'm going to remove anniversary to 16. I'm also going to remove all of the commas. You actually don't need to include those and it will look just fine. And then second lowest volume, we are going to remove Father's Day. Now at this point, I can see there are actually a lot of keywords with dad and husband. So I'm actually going to be removing cell phone and watch simply because those aren't used as much. I don't think they're going to convert as well for us as the gift keyword specifically which is sometimes also used within the charging station keywords, as you can see even here, docking station Father's Day. So this is actually quite an important keyword for us. And so now we have Father's Day, Valentine's birthday gifts for men, dad. So we've just included that there. I know that's not the neatest, but it still reads while well. people are just looking, is this a good fit? for my dad's gift, my husband's gift, etc. Now we're at 193 characters. So of course, if your brand name's longer than seven characters, then that's an issue. You would bring it down, but you get the gist of it. And each time you've actually used a keyword, mark it off within this document as we've done here. And that is only if you've used the keyword in full. Okay, so for example here, gifts for dad we won't mark off because we only have dad within the title this is important because now we've used these keywords in the title when we move to the next set the next most important in the bullet points we know which ones we've used 
in full and which ones we can now move on to including. But that is the gist of this and how you want to start thinking about these keywords and how they relate to your listing. Now we've created a draft title here, but let's jump over to our listing worksheet, which you can download for free below. That's going to show us much more details on this. Also, how to position stuff on the listing and then how do we do our bullet points, description, etc. And this is the listing worksheet and I bet you've been working on this a bit. This is what you want to use to actually optimize the process we're going through. And you're going to start with your alpha keywords. So these are obviously your best, best keywords. An alpha keyword is, of course, extremely relevant, high search volume. And you do want to hinge keywords to save space as we've gone through. Then bold and italicize the hinged keywords. So you can actually see the keywords within the key phrase. And so I've actually built the sheet out around the example we're going through in these videos. So you can actually see them here. I've put them in. And this is what you will have if you download this below. And then on the next page, it's your turn. And you're going to list yours in order of importance, your top 10. But to show you how I got these 10, you can see our green document on the left and our top 10 here on the right. Now, what I recommend you do and what I've done is I deleted the competitor number and I've changed this to a rank. And then we want to rank our keywords. So this is rank one. It's our most important keyword. Remember that hinges like all four of these. Number two is this keyword, number three and so on. So you're actually going to rank them. I recommend you rank your top 30 at least. As you can see, I ended with a lot of our gift terms, which I do want to include. But rank your top 30. As you, as you can see, we got to 30 here, looking at high relevance and just relevant. And of course, if you have a hinged keyword, like for example, this one, which includes these two, then that's even more important because we've got good volume on both of those. And so the hinged keyword would be the one you add to your power keywords. But as you can see, wood phone docking station for men, that's rank one. Wood docking station organizer, rank two, and so on. And that's how you build your list of your top 10 keywords. So on the following page, you're actually going to add your 10. Next, we look at ideal customers. Who is your ideal customer? And you want to define at least two here. So for example, for us, 25 to 50 year old woman in need of a gift for their significant other, because that's someone who often buys these docking stations for men and fill them in here. Then customer goals. So why do people purchase your product? What do they aim to achieve? What is their goal? Now, if you use our product funnel, which is more for product research, but includes review research, that review research is going to tell you a lot of these goals here. So in our example, it's to provide an epic gift to a loved one on a special occasion. You're going to add your customer goals here. Customer concerns. So what do people worry about when buying your product? This is also something that's going to come up within reviews. And you're also going to find it within customer questions and answers. In our example, that it is built cheaply and it's not going to last. Then it's your turn, you're gonna add yours here. Then product name, so this is our title. You can find it under the vital info tab and the back end of your listing in Seller Central. But a great title has your alpha keywords, customer goals, and readability in that order. Character limits vary by category, but 200 characters very common, and you can aim for 200 minus your brand name. But the most important is to include your keywords. Don't repeat keywords unless they're part of a key phrase. And then here is our example. Now this is slightly revised after I re-looked at some of our keywords, and particularly when I input the 10 alpha keywords on the sheet that helped me revise this even more. So that's our title currently. You're going to insert yours here. But those 10 alpha keywords help a ton here because as you can see, you already have the full phrases here, including all the hinged keywords. So you have a lot of choice here. And as you start to build the title, you can choose those that make sense, obviously from the top down, because these are our highest search volume at the top. And once you've put that in on the next page, we do analysis. Orange is an alpha keyword. Green is a customer goal, something they want to achieve. Italics or bold shows our hinged keywords inside of phrases. So wood phone docking station for men is actually three keywords in there. The whole phrase, 
then the italicized part and then the bold part and the same throughout here there's actually eight keywords in there and then at the end for father's day valentine's birthday gifts for men which of course doesn't read perfectly but it, it gets the just across to the customer and that is their goal to provide a gift in a lot of cases and these two at the end birthday gifts for men and gifts for men are also keywords so we actually have 10 keywords in this title and then it's your turn you're going to do the exact same with your title here and once you've done that and optimized it we can move to product features now these are of course your bullet points and you can find them under the description tab on the back end of your listing in seller central now they will be between five and ten here you're going to shape your customer goals and concerns into well outlined benefits then you want to include your next 10 to 20 alpha keywords that you haven't included in the title and each bullet should follow a structure similar to this capitalized benefit followed by evidence and features supporting that benefit and always including your keywords naturally. In our example here, you can see declutter in style is number one and buy it nice or buy it twice is number two because durability is such an important thing here. People worry about the quality. And the first of course talks about the actual purpose of the product, which is to declutter, keep everything in one place, but also look good while doing that. Then in orange, we can see all the keywords we've managed to include. So we've managed to include six within the first two bullet points. That's why I say try to get 10 to 20 within your bullets. And then anything in green is about evidencing the actual benefit. So how have we designed the product to produce that benefit? What is it made of so that it is durable evidence to back that benefit? And then it's your turn. You're going to insert your five bullets here. Then we come to description. Now your product description is called product description under the description tab on your listing. Not many customers actually read this. So our big thing we are going to include as many keywords as we can here. Of course, if you are brand registered, you want to apply the same principles here, but using A plus content. If you're not brand registered, you're just going to create a description in this box on Amazon. And if you do that, you may be able to edit it with HTML, but Amazon is removing that ability. So using very similar principles to our bullet points, weaving in keywords, Produce five headings here that align with your customer goals. Product content list, sizing charts, and product use cases also work well in this section. But just start with the five headings. And even if you're doing A plus content, I recommend you do this because they can be headings or sections within your A plus content template. Next, for each heading, you're actually going to write out the content just like we did the bullet points, naturally weaving in your keywords. Also, again, A plus content, do this because you do have body sections within A plus where you want to weave in keywords. Also, for A plus content, you're going to be adding imagery. Anytime you add an image, you're going to see an alt text area like image text. Always use that for a keyword. Even if you've used all your keywords by this point, include your alpha keywords in there and this is because amazon's search engine crawlers are what they're called but it's just the little robots that go over your listing to index it to see what keywords you have they cannot see images they can only read about them so if you use powerful keywords there it tells the crawlers that your images are very relevant and it indexes you for those keywords whether they're new keywords or repeated keywords, but definitely use keywords there. And once we're done with that, we can go to search terms. Now, these are your back end keywords. They're also called search terms, and you can find them in the keywords tab on the back end of your listing. And this is where we cover all keyword data we haven't managed to get on the listing. You don't want to include competitor brand names or keywords you've already used on the listing. This is a very good place for misspells and you have one line of 250 bytes available normal characters a to z or numbers 0 to 9 each count as one byte don't use any special characters though like dollar signs etc because those can count as much as four bytes also note a space does not count as a byte so here do not repeat keywords 
and don't use commas. Just separate the words with a space. It also does not need to make any sense or be a phrase in any way. It can be a jumble of words, but they're all unique words separated by spaces. And you'll remember we already have our misspell folder. So what we're going to do here is go export folder on Helium 10 and export to Frankenstein. You will see that all of the keywords are added in here. Add only spaces, remove duplicates, and convert to lowercase. Also remove special characters. Then click process. And you will see all of the words here. So these are all unique words separated only by a space. And we have character count of 219. But we also want to have the byte count. So what we can do is copy this. And if you don't have Helium 10, you can also do this. Use Uber Seller. I'll also link this below. It's also linked from that listing worksheet but here you can do the same process i'm really going to click this to find the byte number and then we can see here 219 bytes which is actually the same as characters i thought there was a big difference between the two but perhaps i'm wrong so that is good 219 bytes so we're under 250 bytes and then we're going to copy this and drop it into our listing. And so here I've literally just added that to our example at the bottom of search terms. So if you've watched this, it will be really relatable as you use this. But that's the example. And then it will be your turn. Here is Uber Seller mentioned. And then you add your keywords here. And that is it. That's how you can include all of your keywords throughout your listing in the most important places. Also saving a lot of real estate by hinging. But as you can see, there's a lot of room. Even the description area has a huge character count. So you're going to be able to get the majority of these onto your listing, at least your top 50, as we've detailed here in terms of the rank and how important those are. But I do hope you found this helpful. Remember, this is just the first step because the next step is actually using these same keywords, most of which are on your listing, but in PPC. And if you want to learn that after doing this, I recommend you check out PPC part one, which I'll link up here as well. And that will actually guide you through creating your first campaigns for your product. Part two on optimizing those campaigns. But do remember, you can download this listing worksheet absolutely free below here. It will have free form input. So it's very easy for you to use in like PDF format. And if you did enjoy this, please drop me a quick like. I am done with keywords for today. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay ahead of your competition. But I would love to hear from you below. What did you think of this video? Did you find it helpful? How do you do your keywords? And I will catch you in the next video.